as Phil Collins used to sing, it's just another day for you and me in paradise, right? And paradise is today, because today <laughs> is actually about gravity gradient stabilization. That was just a joke to begin with. Um, so, as I mentioned, when we looked at gravity gradient in terms of its perturbing effect on spacecraft and thereby creating a torque about the spacecraft's center of mass, I said that it was going to turn to our advantage ultimately because now we can use this effect to stabilize our spacecraft into what's known as a nadir configuration. Nadir, N-A-D-R, uh, means that the spacecraft has one axis directly aligned with the position vector and looking down at the Earth throughout the orbit. So instead of having an inertially uh, fixed spacecraft, if that is the Earth, spacecraft orbit, instead of having the spacecraft maintaining always the same orientation with respect to the Earth, which could be, you know, fine if that's what you want to do is, I don't know, look at some distant stars out there, that might be fine. But if you want to do an Earth observation mission, then instead, you'd rather have the spacecraft always maintaining line of sight with the ground and thereby torquing itself throughout the orbit to always maintain, again, the same body fixed unit vector pointing at the ground like that. And it turns out that gravity gradient does exactly this to our spacecraft. And specifically, it would torque the spacecraft such that it maintains a nadir, nadir? orientation with its minor axis aligned with the position vector of the spacecraft. Okay? Nadir along minor axis of inertia or minor axis of rotation. Now the problem with that is that should the spacecraft experience other perturbations throughout its orbit or something that would cause the spacecraft to deviate largely from this nominally uh, maintained nadir orientation, then the spacecraft all of a sudden could flip upside down and end up looking away from the Earth because this orientation away from the Earth or looking down at the Earth, nadir, are two stable equilibrium uh, points for gravity gradient. Okay, so either gravity gradient will pull the minor axis in this direction, but if this starts to swing, it could very well flip upside down and all of a sudden uh, switch to the other equilibri equilibrium point, which is spacecraft looking away from the Earth. So we have to be careful with that, okay? But if we assume that the oscillations are maintained small with respect to the nadir uh, orientation, then those oscillations should grow with time because gravity gradient will passively want to maintain that nadir orientation, okay? And for that reason, the bulk of this section here will be to look at the equations of motion, but this time with respect to the roll pitch yaw reference frame, so body fixed reference frame involving the roll pitch yaw reference frame now because if we are in the nadir configuration, we would have the minor axis of the body fixed reference frame aligned with uh, QZ of the roll pitch shaw reference frame, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, QZ, okay? So because of that, we'll say that the equilibrium condition is whenever the minor axis of our spacecraft is aligned with QZ or the Z unit vector of roll pitch shaw reference frame as defined in a previous lecture. And then we're gonna look at the orientation of the spacecraft with respect to this nominal orientation in terms of the Euler angles, rho, pitch, yaw, defining the orientation of body fixed with respect to the rho, pitch, yaw reference frame as opposed to, your, as opposed to using our rho, pitch, yaw angles to define the orientation of the spacecraft with respect to ECI. Remember that discussion that earlier angles could be used to 
uh, express body fix with respect to two reference frames, ECI or roll pitch shock. Well, now we're going to use the, uh, the fact that earlier angles are going to be used to define body fix with respect to roll pitch shot and analyze the stability of those three individual angles, roll pitch shot. Okay? So let's do that. That will be in 4.4.1. Equations of the motion with respect to roll pitch angle defining that respective orientation I talked about. Okay. So the first thing in the process is to go back to what we know. J omega b dot plus omega b skewed times j times omega b, our gyroscopic effect, equal to, now we won't be setting that to zero, because the objective is to analyze the stability provided by gravity gradient torque. So let's put the gravity gradient torque expressed in the body fixed reference frame. Uh, for completeness, this term still denotes the angular velocity the vector in terms of body fixed reference and components, but of body fixed with respect to ECI. Okay? J, the inertial matrix, obviously. Okay, and therefore to be highly accurate, I could also write bi so that we're all on the same page and refer to our omega b as omega bi to really know that this is body fixed from the perspective of ECI. Okay, but I know that I can use the angular velocity additivity property to turn this vector in terms of summation of two other vectors. And because I want to do things by involving the roll pitch shot reference frame, I'm going to say that this is body fixed with respect to roll pitch shot plus roll pitch shot with respect to ECI, like that. Or just write that vectorial uh, equation obtained from the additivity property of angular velocity vectors in two components. And write that this is my omega bi expressed in the body fix. That one naturally is going to be expressed in body fix as well, so omega bq. But this one will be expressed naturally in the roll pitch our reference frame. So for that reason, if I want to add the x components together, the y components together, and the z components together of that equation, it means I need to write everything in the same common reference frame, in that instance being the body fixed reference frame. I'm going to write CBQ to turn the components of this vector expressed in the Q reference frame into body fix. So now I have body fix components, body fix, and body fix. Nice. Now, if you were to do the math here, and I'm not going to do it, you could refer to chapter one for that. You could write, well, let's first have a look at CBQ. Okay, let's not do things too quickly. So CBQ is the rotation matrix defining row pit, uh, body fixed with respect to roll pitch our reference frame. And for this, we have the relationship and equation 1.25 of chapter one. Okay? And I'm gonna just copy it here. So CBQ, roll pitch our defining body fix with respect to roll pitch our reference frame. It's going to be that big rotation matrix. I'm using C's for cos and S for sines. So cos roll, uh, cos pitch, 
cos yaw angle, cos pitch sine yaw, minus sine pitch, sine roll angle, sine pitch, cos yaw, minus cos roll, sine yaw. I'm writing the bigger matrix here. Here, second column, second row. Sine roll, sine pitch, sine yaw, plus cos roll, cos yaw. And lastly, sine roll, cos pitch angle. That is a big matrix, okay? Pitch sign ya yeah, over here. Okay. And the last row. I'm just copying what we had obtained in chapter one for the three two one rotation sequence with earlier angles. But this time defining this specific orientation. Uh, plus sign. Yeah, uh, sign roll sine ya yeah. cos roll sine pitch sine ya yeah angle minus sine ya yeah angle cos ya yeah. and lastly cos roll cos pitch angle Whew. this is quite a three by three matrix isn't it so this is for c b q what about omega BQ? Well, omega BQ could be obtained from the differential kinematics relationship uh, obtained in chapter one. Okay, so if you go back to what we had to relate the Euler angle rates to the angular uh, velocity vector in terms of components, we had that three by three matrix that was multiplying the Euler angle rates, roll rate, pitch rate, yaw rate, and within this matrix we had one, zero, 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 minus sine pitch cos roll sine roll times cos pitch minus sine roll cos roll cos pitch angle okay as obtained in chapter one nothing new here but what i'm going to do here is to assume that my angles roll pitch, yaw angles for the problem at hand are all small. Because these correspond to our small perturbing terms we had injected into our previous analysis for spin stabilized, dual spin stabilized. Here the perturbing factor is going to be the fact that we have non-zeros roll pitch yaw angles that define the orientation of the body fix reference frame with respect to the uh, roll pitch yaw reference frame okay because roll pitch is always dead center with its qz looking down and orbits around the er the earth at a rate uh, equal to the mean orbital motion should that orbit be a perfect circular orbit but if we start deviating or if we start to have some offsets between the the spacecraft defined by its body fixed reference frame and that roll pitch yaw reference frame, we're going to see those angles moving a little bit okay roll, pitch, and a little bit of yaw and stuff like that. But yet we're considering that those offsets between the two reference frames of interest are small, okay? So small deviations. Think of it as the ball at the bottom of the, the valley here. We're not putting that ball right here and analyze the stability. That would be too much. We're just pushing it a little bit to the left or to the right, and then hands off, and we're looking at the resulting motion. 
Well, those are, in all actualities, are perturbations that take the spacecraft away from the ideal roll pitch yaw, uh, reference frame orientation, which is always nadir oriented. Okay, such that this matrix here with the trig functions could be replaced by using the small angle assumption as simply being 1, 0, 0, 0. Sine of a small angle is always uh, the angle itself. So minus uh, pitch. Cos of a small angle will always be assumed to be 1. And just keep filling the matrix based on that assumption. And this still multiplying the row pitch yaw rate of change. And all this is for this term that we have in here. That we're going to substitute for omega bi in our original equations of motion. This is why we're doing all of that. Okay? Um, I'm running out of space. Let me then simplify my CBQ using the small angle approximation as well. Should I finish this? I'm kind of all over the place. I'm not following the lecture notes in a way, shape, or form here. I'm just doing things as I feel. Uh, yeah, let me finish Omega BQ with small angle assumption. And then we'll look at how we could simplify CBQ as it was obtained previously in the notes. And then we're going to swap it back into Omega BI turn everything into the Euler's equations of motion and keep moving forward, okay? That is the plan. So, therefore, omega bq is going to be equal to 1 times roll rate and minus pitch times yaw rate. Next entry will be pitch rate plus roll angle times yaw rate. And here we're going to get the minus roll angle times pitch rate plus yaw rate, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay. But well, here, because we are assuming that we have small angles and small rates, it means that the multiplication of a small quantity with another small quantity will be approximated to be equal to zero. And therefore, we are left with simply roll rate, pitch rate, and yaw rate. So the rate of change of our Euler angles exactly equal to the components of our angular velocity vector. That holds whenever we are assuming that the motion is small in terms of Euler angles and that it is moving slowly in terms of Euler angle rates. Okay? So we get that for omega bq that we're going to substitute in our omega bi equation I had here on the bottom. But before, let me go back and finish CBQ in terms of simplifying this one using the small angle assumption. CBQ. Okay. Just give me a shout if I do a mistake on the board. Of course. <laughs> you can. I wish you were there with me, but hey, that's what it is. So cos cos, that's a one. Cos sine is just the angle itself. Minus sine is just minus the angle itself, minus pitch. Sine, sine, cos, 
would mean that this is those two angles multiplied together. Minus cos is 1, the sine of the angle, so just minus ya. Yeah. Sine, sine, sine would mean this, 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 plus cos, cos, so plus 1, and that would be row angle for second row, third column entry. Here would get pitch, pitch plus roll yaw, pitch yaw minus yaw. Did you hear that? Phone is ringing. I'm not gonna hear. Answer it. So this is this is for this. So that is one indeed. This is just the yaw angle. And lastly, for here we get only one. Let me just double check that. Yes. No. That was cos sine sine minus. Oh, yeah, that was in ya, yeah, that was rho in here, so that is phi, so minus phi, okay? Here we go. And then because the multiplication of two small angles end up to be zero, it means that this matrix could further be simplified to be minus ya yeah angle here, pitch, one minus roll and that's it all this for a rotation matrix not too bad not too bad okay so now we looked at omega bq we looked at cbq the last term in that equation we need to have a look at for our omega bi equation is omega qi <clears throat> and in order to get an analytical expression that we can solve at the end of the day we need to assume that we are traveling along a circular orbit which means that the roll pitch yaw reference frame <clears throat> with respect to the ECI reference frame would rotate <clears throat> Sorry. With respect to ECI, it says spins about its negative y direction like that at a rate equal to n. Because the roll pitch a reference frame completes one full rotation throughout one complete orbit, just by virtue of how it is defined. And if that orbit happens to be circular, it means that that reference frame rotates at a constant rate equivalent to the mean orbital motion m. Well, that is great. We like it. Because this allows us to write the last term in the omega bi equation, which was omega qi in terms of components, to be equal to 0 minus n, so n about minus y direction, and zero about qz, just like that. And by the way, this minus n will be equal to minus square root of mu over a cubed as a constant. Good, good, good. So let's insert everything back into our omega bi equation that we had in terms of components, as seen in the body fixed reference frame. So here we had our omega bq that we had simplified and approximated to be just the earlier angle rates, like that, because of our small angle assumption, plus our cbq rotation matrix, which is now just 
one, ja minus pitch, minus ja, one, roll, pitch, minus roll, and one, times omega qi, the components, and that would just be zero minus n, zero. Okay? So if you perform that linear algebra operation, you would then get those earlier angle rates, defining the rate at which body fixed reference frame is spinning with respect to the roll pitch our reference frame. And now here we go, zero minus n times ya and zero. Here, theta dot, zero, minus n, minus n, that's it. And yaw rate equal to zero plus n roll angle plus zero. And that looks about right. Okay? So all this is for omega bi. So back in our equations of motion that we had originally, we now have this term uh, figured out. But there is also the necessity to obtain omega bi dot, right? Remember, the original equations of motion started with j times omega bi dot. Well, that's not a problem because omega bi dot will simply be equal to the time derivative of this here. So this minus chain rule, n dot y minus n yaw rate. That is pitch acceleration minus n dot. That is yaw acceleration plus n dot rho plus n rho rate. Or, alternatively, remembering that n the mean orbital motion is a constant, right? Square root of mu over a cube along a circular orbit, a is constant and equal to the radius. But the thing is constant here because mu is also a constant, obviously. So the time derivative of a constant means that those terms are all equal to zero. And for omega b i dot in terms of body fixed reference term components, we're going to get earlier angle ac uh, roll acceleration minus n yaw rate pitch acceleration yaw acceleration plus n roll rate. Outstanding. Outstanding. So now we have pretty much all the pieces in place to go back to our original equations of motion and just substitute omega bi dot with this, omega bi with that, the inertia matrix is going to be defined with a principal axis, body fixed reference frame. So just G, uh, jx, jy, jz along the main diagonal and zeros elsewhere. And that's all we need. Equal on the right-hand side of that equation, if you remember, the torque due to gravity gradient expressed in a body fixed reference frame. And uh, I'll show you what we do with that term later on. So first, let's go back to what we had. Just to make sure that we're all on the same page. The torque, gravity gradient, in body fix. Just like that. Well, we have just established that omega bi dot and omega bi were equal to this in terms of earlier angles, okay? So, this watch will just plug that right back in and expand all the matrices and figure what we get at the end of the day. So, J, our Jx, Jy, J 
Okay, Z, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, like that. Times omega B I dot as a 3 by 1 column matrix. Okay. Plus, oh no, this Q symmetric matrix constructed out of that 3 by 1. Okay, we know how to do that. Right? We're a small group of people, so we remember that Q symmetric, symmetric yeah, matrix is the one that has zeros on the lead diagonal. So here we go, 0, 0, 0. That element here is always minus of the Z component, which is going to be, yeah, minus yaw rate plus N roll angle, like that. Here we have the Y uh, element directly, so that is theta dot minus N. And here we have the minus X component. Minus X is going to be minus this, right? Here we have the X component. Here we have the minus of the y component, so minus theta dot minus n. And here we have the z component. Plus this. Quite a matrix. Times j. Jx, jy, jz, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Times omega bi, oh boy, really? Yes, really. It's n plus theta dot minus n, yaw rate plus n times roll angle. All this equal to the gravity gradient torque on that side of the equation. How do I feel about that? Do I really want to do this? Okay, here's the deal. I'm going to go through that step by step with you, yet I'm going to use the magic of the board, okay? So I'm going to erase terms and replace terms directly in that equation because if I were to copy, say, that term three times until I get to the point where I can manage it, it's going to take me forever, and that's going to be painful to you to watch, probably, for you to watch. Uh, so let me just, again, use the magic of the board. For you, you'll probably have to pause between the individual steps I'm going to be doing so that you can copy the equations on your loose sheet of paper. But that's how we're going to do it, okay? This is easy to figure out because this is a diagonal matrix. So I'm going to get this times Jx, that times Jy, and this one times Jz. Okay. Like this. Jx. Like that. Jy. This minus that. And Jz. Times yaw rate plus n roll angle. Here we go. Okay. Uh, let me handle this term in the exact same fashion. This is identity times a three by one. So I'm going to end up with a three by one that just, well, not identity, but diagonal matrix. It's going to be a three by one that just multiplies X component together the Y components together and the Z components together, okay? So Jx times 
do this. this done. Jy. Okay, that double dot. Here, Jz. Times your acceleration plus n times roll rate. Yes. Oh, not too, not too bad. Finally, let me next handle this guy up. Okay, just gonna write. Okay, let me rewrite that for completeness. It won't be that long. I'm assuming you guys are smart enough to handle those linear algebra calculations on your own, but who knows? Could be beneficial to you to watch me play here for a little bit. Now, 3 by 3 times 3 by 1 is going to be a 3 by 1, yet a big one. And all of that will be equal to gravitational, gravity gradient torque applied on the spacecraft express in the body fixed reference frame. Okay, so here we go. Zero times that plus jy theta dot minus n times this guy. I should have put the minus sign up front. Like that. Okay. Minus jy times this times this plus n like that. Plus this times that. this one. All this is for the x component, if I'm not mistaken. Let's just double check here. So far so good. Let's do the y equation now. We have jx, this minus this times this, your rate plus n, roll angle, plus zero times this, which is zero, plus this times that, so minus jz, your rate plus n, roll angle, that multiplies roll rate minus n, your angle. Just double check real quick. Jx yes minus Jz mm -hmm. we're good okay now this times that so minus Jx this, this, but this time that multiplies this guy. So pitch rate minus n plus this term times that one plus jy pitch rate minus n times roll rate minus n times your angle. Ooh. Nice. Very, very nice. Now, does it make sense? Yes, because if you look carefully, we get a repetition of terms all over the place here. For example, here we have the theta dot minus n, theta dot minus n. We also have the uh, psi dot plus n phi. I'm going to put in circle 
got this here and here. And same thing for the other two equations. This matches that, and this matches this exactly. And similarly for the z equation, that term here is the same as this one, and this one in the circle matches that one. All this to say that we can simplify this big three by one matrix with the following. Okay, so we could write an equation as Jx is n sine of Jy get a double dot, Jz, this plus n, like that, okay? This equal to, let's simplify things a bit here, uh, not equal, but plus. So we're going to factor out Jz minus Jy, J z minus j y times those two parentheses multiplied together. That's n i. Okay. And here we have x minus z in terms of principal moments of inertia. And they both multiply those things. So phi dot minus n psi times psi dot plus n phi. Okay. And here we have y minus x, jy minus jx both multiplying this term and that one. So this plus that equal to gravity gradient torque in the body fixed reference frame about the center of mass of the spacecraft. All right. So what now? Well, now we're going to use the small angle approximations to small angle, small rates to handle those terms here. Okay? So specifically, boom, 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 plus that and let's just focus on those things here so here we're going to get theta dot psi dot plus theta dot n phi minus n psi dot minus n square phi okay i've just multiplied these two together and i'm going to do the same for the rest here so this plus this n rho minus n this and that. Minus n square phi. That really don't give me zero. Okay, so be it. <laughs> I thrust the map. So here, boom, boom, minus this and n. Now minus n phi theta dot plus n square psi. 
all is equal to again gravity gradient torque in body fixed reference frame. Such that those three things end up being equal to, let's see, zero, zero, and non zero, non zero, 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 non zero, zero. Okay? So times minus n psi dot minus n square phi zero and then here minus n roll rate plus n square yaw angle. Does that make sense? Boom 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 boom. Yeah, so altogether the second term of this three by one matrix is zero. That's good news. We like when things get canceled and complain. So let's go. Hello, hello. Did I just unplug the microphone? One, two, one, two. I'll be right back. Hello? Okay. So let's see what we end up with at the end of the day, which is not now. We still have to work. We'll suffer a little bit till we get there. Let's see. I'm going to leave that expression as it is. Can I go any further? So I'm going to turn now my attention to this term. And this term, instead of using the expressions we have derived in chapter 3, orbital perturbations for gravity gradient in terms of components and body fix, I'm going to use an alternate ex expression for this torque term. And it's going to be up to you to derive that expression as one of the problems in chapter 3. Okay? Turns out that this could, can be expressed as... 3 n square times jz minus jy times roll angle jz minus jx this and zero okay so that means that this expression for gravity gradient torque in terms of components in x, y, z doesn't torque the spacecraft at all about the yaw axis. And that makes a lot of sense. Because if I'm the spacecraft hovering above the Earth, which is the floor, which you can see, but I have a magnificent carpet here. <laughs> okay? Uh, the gravity gradient action is a restoring torque along this or along that direction. Gravity gradient will not influence the rotational motion I have perpendicular to the Earth because the line of action of the gravitational force is directly through this axis and therefore will not create any torque because this axis passes through the center of mass of the spacecraft and therefore has no moment arm to create any torque. And that's why we see that the Z component of the torque is zero here. Now, the other thing to realize is that the torque is actually proportional along X to the roll angle. So the bigger the roll angle, the larger the restoring torque will be to bring it back to Nader. And same for the pitch direction, which is only uh, proportional to the pitch angle. So the bigger the pitch angle will be, the larger the restoring torque about this axis will be to bring it back right down, okay? So that is a very neat expression for gravity gradient torque and body fix 
that gives us a lot of physical insights as to how gravity gradient operates. Okay, this is really the sheer expression of a restoring torque being proportional to the deviations in terms of angle. All right. So now, uh, all I have left to do is to do that summation of those two matrix, because I figured out the right hand side, I'm pretty much done here. Let's say plus this, and that one will be quite simple. That term plus that. Excellent. So what does that actually gives me? All right, I have three equations. I can see that, but I've lost sight of our objective or what we were doing in the process. Well, those equations gives us the time dependency of the roll pitch uh, earlier angles as function of the gravity gradient torque being applied to the spacecraft. Or in other words, it gives me the orientation of body fixed with respect to the roll pitch uh, reference frame because this is what the earlier angles were representing in this situation given gravity gradient. So those equations of motion will be used to determine the stability of roll pitch uh, angles as time goes by, given that gravity gradient is trying to, uh, or given that gravity gradient is acting on the spacecraft. Okay, I was going to say it's trying to get all angles to be zero, but no, that's not technically it because the system is not asymptotically stable under gravity gradient, it is just going to be stable as a heads up, okay? So, what I'm gonna do now is just rewrite uh, those equations slightly differently for ease of further development in the next subsection. Uh, yeah. Those equations are going to be written as this. And then if you look, this n psi dot term is multiplying jx, jz, and jy, all with the negative sign, meaning that this is going to be positive, negative, negative, uh, or ultimately negative, of jx minus jy because that is going to be the positive one plus jz because jz is going to be turned negative as well of what of n psi dot plus i'm going to pull these terms here on the left hand side of my equation Because, so I've dealt with this, that, and that. This is here. The only thing I have to deal with is my n square roll angle. And that's what I happen to have here on this side. n square roll angle times jz minus jy. So same thing here. Here it is going to be in minus one of this quantity. Whereas here I have positive three of the same thing. On the other side, meaning that I'm going to get negative, negative, a negative 4n square that multiplies jz minus jy, or alternatively positive of jy minus jz that multiplies 4n square times 5. All this equal to zero, okay? I'm gonna apply, well, that one is pretty much straightforward. We don't have a lot going on here. This, then I want things to be positive here. I'm gonna say plus jx 
minus jz instead of the other way around. 3 n square times pitch angle equal to 0 as well. And here I'm just going to apply the same trick as I did for the first equation. And write jz yaw acceleration. And now I have jz times this. And I have plus jx times the same thing. And minus jy times the same thing. Or ultimately plus jx minus jy plus j z multiplies n times roll rate okay and then I have to do the same trick as before well no because on that side it is zero so I'm just multiplying this with this now I'm going to say plus jy minus jz times n square times yaw angle equal to zero. Great. Great. So those are my three equations of motion that will form the starting point of the stability analysis for roll, pitch, yaw, angle, or angles, or in other words, the stability analysis of the body fixed reference frame with respect to the roll, pitch, yaw, reference frame. So will gravity gradient be strong enough to stabilize any deviation we have of body fix with respect to roll pitch yaw, or maybe gravity gradient will not be strong enough and the attitude would keep swinging with larger and larger amplitude, or maybe it's going to be so strong that we're going to bring the deviations all back to zero or bring back body fix directly onto roll pitch yaw reference frame, which I think we're going to save for the next lecture. Okay, so in the next lecture, we're going to analyze the stability for the pitch motion because one thing you can notice here is that pitch motion is completely decoupled from roll and yaw that is an interesting fact okay so we're going to first look at the pitch motion stability which ultimately will look very similar to you because it's going to be pretty much the same thing as spin stabilization in terms of way of deriving or inferring the stability out of that equation for these two that are coupled together is going to be quite a bit more complex however so next is going to be roll yaw motion stability analysis and for that i'll pretty much give you the answers because the derivations will be kind of too too extensive for the context of this course um, but yeah that will be coming up next hope you enjoyed that one hope you understand the problem at hand here with respect to the roll pitch our reference frame being involved in the process to better visualize how does body fix deviates from the nadir orientation because conveniently roll pitch our reference frame is always oriented in the nadir configuration so that is why we uh, involve roll pitch our reference frame in the picture here and the fact that in terms of inferring the stability of our rigid body of, or the spacecraft with respect to nadir is the same thing as analyzing the stability of roll, pitch, or angles. That, within this context, actually represent that orientation of body fixed with respect to roll, pitch, yaw. But that will be coming up next time. Till then, keep up the good work. See you soon.